Hello, this is Dr. Mark Milia, and I'm here to explain to you shoulder surgery and what you can expect in your recovery process. I created this video so that when patients are recovering or their families are helping them recover, they feel that they can get in touch with me uh, without difficulty, that they understand the concept of the procedure and, and why we're doing it, as well as understand that I'm available for their questions and concerns and that my team is there to support them. We try and educate the patients in the office, but just in case they didn't un quite understand what was going on, this video shows what a rotator cuff tear is. It's a small tear, usually, in the tendon that attaches to the top of the humerus bone. In this particular scenario, this is a video showing how we repair it, which is, with, which is by putting sutures through microscopic incisions into the tendon and then reattaching them to the bone using a very small four millimeter plastic anchor. One of the ways that we try and make ourselves available is to touch base with our patients on a daily basis through an, uh, an app called Get Well Loop. Get Well Loop was designed to give people the ability to communicate with me with a HIPAA compliant mechanism, but also it gives us the ability to ask patients questions on a daily basis, both before and after surgery, to make sure that they don't have any additional questions and also to make sure that things are going well, well as we would expect them to. If you are scheduled for surgery and you're watching this video and you have not been enrolled in Get Well Loop, please send me an email at miliama at mosortho.com. My assistant can then enroll you in Get Well Loop and get the process going. It, it can come as either a text message or an email for whatever you're comfortable with. Now the text message that you will receive will look something like this on the left side of the screen. It's, I think it's usually a 240 number and it'll ask you to activate your account. Then on your phone you'll see a picture of me asking you to check in. And then on the far right, the check-ins daily will look like this picture. And if you notice in the upper right hand area where it says add comment, if you touch that button, it'll give you the ability to send me um, a message that's HIPAA compliant and I'm pretty good about responding to those text messages uh, during the course of the day. Uh, I don't usually check those messages after 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night, so if you send me a message in the evening, I probably won't receive it until the morning. So it's really designed for non-emergent questions. After you are scheduled for your surgery, you're going to be given information on where your procedure is taking place. I, I work out of three different facilities. One is Taylor Beaumont, which is where we do our shoulder replacements. And then the Beaumont Dearborn Surgery Center, which is across the street from the main Dearborn campus. And then Surgeon's Choice Medical Center, which is in Southfield. The phone numbers and the locations are, are evident on this slide here. So if you have not received information or you're concerned that you haven't been given the right location, you can contact the facility that you think you're scheduled for. The phone numbers are each on this slide, as I mentioned, and uh, the Taylor one is on the right and the Surgeon's Choice is on the left with Dearborn Surgery Center in the middle. One of the things it is important to do before your surgery is kind of get prepared for it. It would be recommended leading up to the procedure to kind of get used to using your non-surgical hand. So if you're right-handed and you're having shoulder surgery on your right side, you may want to learn how to use your left hand to do some things. Those people that are real motivated um, about cooking and getting their meals ready can certainly try and do a meal prep so that there's not much to do for them other than um, heat up some frozen dinners. Certainly, if you're, if you're going to be spending a lot of time by yourself and don't have as much family uh, or friends helping you out, this is a, a good way to get things ready for yourself. It's been suggested by some patients to get clothing that's uh, either larger than usual or has a front closure for both shirts or bras. Slip-on shoes are helpful so that you don't have to worry about lacing your shoes up because you're going to be kind of one-handed for two to four weeks. It is also recommended to have some colace or Benefiber around the house because narcotic pain medication, which you will likely need for a week or two, can be quite constipating. And so it would be good to prevent that from occurring by getting a, a head start with that with a stool softener. I do recommend if you need a sleep aid to try something such as melatonin, which is a vitamin 
or Advil PM, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory with Benadryl. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories do not interact with narcotics in a harmful way, so it's a reasonable uh, approach to take at night. This is one example of a shirt you could buy on Amazon. It has a Velcro uh, closure so you can get your sling on and off. So if you decided you wanted to have something like that around the house, these are not too terribly expensive. Additionally, um, preparation for sleep. There's three different ways that you can sleep. One way is certainly in your own bed. If you're sleeping in bed and your sling um, is in a scenario where you have a pillow around your waist, which is something I use in the majority of the patients. You can sleep on your on your non-surgical side with your surgical arm uh, balanced on two or three pillows or if you like to sleep on your back you would put the pillow behind the elbow which is on the right hand side. If you look at this picture this is for somebody who has who has chosen to purchase a memory foam wedge top pillow you can buy this on Amazon as well, and that's for people who really like to sleep in bed and are having a difficult time getting comfortable. What I what I have experienced most though is patients tend to like to sleep in a recliner chair for the first couple of weeks. It's just a lot easier. You don't have to worry about rolling over on your arm and waking yourself up in the middle of the night. The one caveat is that if you have surgery on your right side and it has a right-sided pull handle like this particular chair does, you may need assistance getting in and out of the chair and disengaging the reclining aspect of it. Now once again, taking some Advil PM or melatonin can be helpful if you're having a hard time sleeping. Sleep is a very common problem that patients have after shoulder surgery. It usually gets better after a couple of weeks, but it is unfortunately a very common problem. Now a couple of things that we try and do to help you uh, with with the post-operative pain is we do what's called the preoperative block. It's done by the anesthesiologist. They do this by first giving you an IV in the non-surgical arm. And they give you a little medication to sedate you and then they use an ultrasound to find the nerves that go into the shoulder and inject some numbing medicine. Now that numbing medicine is then delivered by a, a very small catheter <clears throat> that's delivering numbing medicine over the course of a three-day period. It can have some side effects though. The, obviously you're going to have numbness in your hand. Some people don't like that. It can affect your breathing because the lung is close to uh, the nerves that go to the arm. People can have a hoarse voice and they can have a droopy eyelid. So if you don't like those uh, types of symptoms or they're really bothersome, if you take the catheter out, for example, let's say you have these problems, you take the catheter out after the first day your numbness and all the symptoms will resolve within an hour or so. So you do need to make sure that you have taken pain medication before removing the catheter. Another thing I would recommend is even if you are completely numb and not having any pain, that before you go to sleep at night, you take at least one pain pill, just in case you're a restless sleeper or you pull the catheter out of your neck in the middle of your sleep, because basically you'll have no pain medicine in your system within an hour. So if you take pain medicine before you go to sleep, that's less, less likely to cause any problems. Now additionally, when you are sent home, you will be given a phone number to contact the anesthesia people if you have any issues with the catheter. And so, although I'm available, it's really preferable that you contact, contact them first. If they don't have answers for you, or if there's other issues that are not related to catheter, I'm going to be giving you some contact information here later in the presentation to contact me. Now, a couple of the facilities that we work out of do have ICE units. Unfortunately, the Dearborn Surgery Center does not. So if you're having surgery at the Dearborn Surgery Center and you want an ICE unit, certainly ask me ahead of time and we can try and get you a prescription for one. A lot of insurance companies don't pay for it. So I recommend for people that would like an ICE unit, they can get it on Amazon for about $100. This is the one that is easy to use and not expensive. Icing really is more important after a few days from the surgery because once the numbing device wears off, icing can reduce the amount of pain medication you may need. If you are not using an ice unit, you can use bags of ice. I would recommend not doing ice on the shoulder directly for more than 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and you can do it up to three times a day. If you are putting ice over a towel or some type of protectant over your skin, you can ice longer. We don't like ice to be directly on the skin because it can actually freeze the skin, which is 
almost similar to a burn. Now pain medication will be provided to you as a prescription the day of the surgery usually since your arm is going to be numb for at least 24 to 72 hours you will have time to get your prescription filled um, most most patients will have their families drop the prescription off on their way home and then circle back and pick it up later in the afternoon and once again I would recommend taking a pain medicine before you go to sleep the first night just in case there's a unusual possibility that you remove your catheter while you're sleeping which is actually very rare I just want to bring it up you really shouldn't drink alcohol while you're taking pain medication because alcohol goes through the liver just like narcotic pain medication and it can really overly sedate you and you should not operate a vehicle it's illegal to operate a vehicle on narcotics and then any pain medication that we provide will have unless we've discussed it with you generally has acetaminophen in it and acetaminophen is the same medicine that's found in Tylenol you can only take up to eight pills in, 40, in 24 hours because it can be toxic to the liver if you take more than that. So that's the reason behind that. So eight pills is about uh, 3,000 milligrams of Tylenol in a 24-hour time frame, which would be considered within the realm of safety. <clears throat> now, if you, if you want to get off the narcotics as quickly as possible, or you want to supplement the narcotics with pain medication, you can take ibuprofen. It's both good while you're taking narcotics and it's also helpful in taking that to try and get off, get off of narcotics. Ibuprofen works different than pain medicine because it is processed through the kidneys. However, people who have either kidney issues or have had ulcers in their stomach or a lot of issues with their, with their stomach should avoid ibuprofen. If you don't have those problems and you can take ibuprofen 800 milligrams up to three times a day or every eight hours would be considered safe. Blood clots are pretty rare after shoulder procedures but certainly a, a small risk and because of that we try and prevent that by recommending aspirin to take 325 milligrams daily for a couple of weeks. Um, another option is to certainly make sure you take your arm out of the sling at least three times a day and do a pendulum exercise which we'll explain later. Uh, blood clots in the upper extremity are fairly rare. They're not as lethal as lower extremity clots. However, it's certainly a problem that we don't want to encounter. And so if you have any type of allergy or sensitivity to aspirin, please let me know so that we can come up with an alternative plan. The other thing that's important is if you had a, a, a blood clot in your leg or in your chest, even if it was 30, 40 years ago, we still need to know about that. And so please let make sure you discuss it with me or your discharging nurse before you leave or contact us. Now, shoulder exercises are something that you can start doing the day after the procedure. Even if you're still numb from the uh, catheter, it's not a bad idea to take your arm out of the sling and just let it dangle. I don't really want you to raise your arm up until you've seen me in the office and so we can go over your procedure in more detail. Um, I'm going to show you a, a pendulum exercise in a second here, but one of the things that's important is that if you take your arm out of the sling three times a day, you just do it for a minute or so, and that'll keep you from getting what's called a frozen shoulder where the, a lot of inflammation sets into the shoulder from not using it, or it can prevent blood clots as we described. In some circumstances, I'm going to let you completely get rid of your sling after the first visit, and that's something that we would discuss thereafter. Now this right here is a picture of a pendulum stretch. After you've removed your sling, you just let your arm dangle. You can even voluntarily let it swing back and forth. I would recommend not moving it more than 8 to 12 inches one way or the other. It's a good idea to just do clockwise and counterclockwise pendulum swings. You can do 10 each direction and I would recommend that three times a day. Now at this point we will transition to part two where I will go over the sling.